What we're going to talk about next is how we can find absolute extrema on a closed interval. So I'm going to go through these steps and then I'll show an example to highlight uh, these steps for you. You should have already seen the video that talks about what a critical number is. So if you haven't, you should watch that first because that idea is used again here. The first thing you want to do is find the critical number. So how do you do that? Two ways. You take the first derivative, set it equal to zero, and you're going to find any, uh, that's a critical number if the value C that you get happens to fall in an interval between A and B. Now if you find a couple critical numbers and one of them does not fall on that interval, then you're going to ignore it. We're only going to look at values between A and B. So that's the first thing you'll do is find any values from that. But remember, also you have a critical number if the derivative is undefined for any of the numbers between A and B. So that would allow you to, to also find a critical number as well. Only from A to B uh, is where you're looking at if the derivative is undefined. So once you find all those critical values, then what you're going to do is you're going to evaluate F at each critical number in A, B. So you're going to do uh, f of c, however many of them there are, you'll evaluate that and find the y values. Usually this is done with a table and I'll show that uh, next once we get into that example. You're also going to evaluate at the endpoints, so you want to find f of a and f of b because remember this is a closed interval, so your absolute max and min could also occur on the endpoints as well. It may not always occur where there's a critical number. Once we have all those values, we see them all on the table, the last thing is you just look at the largest y value means you'll have an absolute max and then if you have a, the smallest y value that's going to be absolute min. Now we're not doing relative max and min here so you might find relative max and mins in between there but it's only going to be asking to find absolute extrema so you're looking for the absolute highest or lowest value that's why you're doing that step number four. So now that we've talked through all these let me show you now an example. Okay so now we've looked through all those steps Let's do an example to illustrate those for finding critical numbers and the absolute extrema. Step number one says that we have to find the first derivative. So let's do that. To find the first derivative, we need to use the power rule. So in this case, uh, here's our function and then there's an the interval that's given. We'll bring the four down, 12x cubed, and then 12 multiply those, x squared and this one comes down minus 24 x to the first power. That's the first derivative. So there's two different things that we look for in order to find critical numbers. The first one is we look at if there's any place where the derivative is undefined, if there's any x values that are undefined that are on my interval, then that could be a critical number. However, what we have here is a polynomial, and we know that polynomials are always going to be defined for all values uh, from negative infinity to positive infinity. So therefore, we're not going to find any critical numbers for looking at where there's going to be something undefined. So the other way we can find a critical number is if we set the first derivative equal to 0. Okay, so 0 equals 12x cubed plus 12x squared minus 24x, setting it equal to 0. In order to solve that, we've got to use factoring. You can take out a common factor first. The common factor for this problem is going to be a 12x. We factor it out, we get x squared plus x and then minus 2. We can always multiply this back through to make sure we did the factoring correct, and in this case it's correct. You want to always factor as far as you can go. This is one that you can factor one more time. So we'll do 12x and then we'll factor this one more time. For this, you're going to get x minus 1, x plus 2. Factors of negative 2 that add up to positive 1, you'll get this. You'll set each one of these factors equal to 0. To get the answers, you'll get x is 0, 1, negative 2. Now, these are critical numbers, but you're only going to include the ones that happen to fall on your interval. We look at the critical numbers we get, we notice that they all fall on that interval between negative 4 and 2, so we're actually going to include all these. So doing all this, that was actually all step number 1. So step number 2 and 3 is going to involve a table, so we're going to do both of steps 2 and 3 at the same time. We want to evaluate our, each of these, the critical numbers, we're going to evaluate them on f of x. We're also going to evaluate the endpoints. 
So the best way to organize that is to make a table of values. Now you could either make it go horizontally like in the notes or you could do it vertically like this. It's your choice which way you want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to put all of our points that we found here and I'm going to put them in order from smallest to largest so you don't have to, but just to keep it organized here, I'll do that in order. So I'm going to do negative four first. That's my A value. That's my left end point. I want to put the critical numbers there, negative two, zero, and one. And then finally I have uh, two, and two is going to be the right end point. I want to take these numbers and I'm putting them into f of x. Notice I'm not using the derivative. I'm using the original function. So I got to put negative four in here for all the x's, evaluate that, do the same thing with negative two, zero, and so forth. Now, if you have a graphing calculator, I do allow you to use this, use that in this class. So what you would do is you would put this in on your y1, and then you would go into the table function on it, and you can scroll through the tables, scroll through the values, and you just write the values down that way. Okay. So either way, if you do it by hand or by calculator, you got to find these y values. I'm just going to give you the answers for these. I'm not going to show you all the work for that. But basically, again, you're just plugging that in for all the x's and you're just working through calculating all of it. So here's the result if you put these numbers in. So negative 4, you're going to get 320. Negative 32, 0 in for all those, you'll get a 0. If you put 1 in for all the x's, you get negative 5. And then if you put 2 in there, you're going to get positive 32. So these are all the values that you'll get uh, from your calculator when you put that in. So that was step two and three by making the table. Step number four would be to look at the table and see which is the highest and the lowest value and that's how you're going to know what your answers are. The absolute max occurs right here at 320. The absolute min is going to occur here because that's the lowest y value. So here's the highest y value, absolute max, the lowest y value on that interval is negative 32. So how are you going to write your answer? Well, when you do these online, in the online homework system, it's going to actually have it written this way. It'll say the absolute max is, there'll be a blank, and it'll say at x equals blank. This is how it's going to be uh, shown online when you do the homework. So all you're going to do is fill in the blanks. The absolute max is always going to be the y value. So you're going to put 320 in there. It occurs at x equals negative 4. That's how you write your answer. Then we have the, the other one it'll say is the absolute min. Absolute min is, again, it'll have these blanks set up and you're just going to fill in the blanks for each one. The absolute min is, okay, the smallest y value you see there, negative 32. It's going to occur at x equals negative 2. And this is how you're going to write your answer. On an exam, I'll tell you exactly how you're going to write the answer. It's, it's based on when I, I do sample exams for this class, and so you'll be able to see how I want the answers written out. Either it'll be written out something like this, or it may just have you write the answer as a, a coordinate.